Yeah. Yeah. Scott Becky's a veteran, and he's our a Democratic candidate for Plymouth County Commissioner, and I'm going to ask Scott if he would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Sheriff, sorry. Go for it. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before you sit, I just want to ask for a moment of silence. We have a lot of great Democrats that we lost throughout the year. The number one name on the list in the back of your book is uh, State Senator Tom Kennedy, who served this community for 30 plus years. And if we can all think of our favorite Democrat who unfortunately is no longer with us. Just a minute. Thank you. You can be seated. I think that'll probably be the only time we can hear a pin drop in the room. <laughs> I am going to start by, before I introduce all the candidates which in elected officials, which will, I'll do quickly, as quickly as I can, with as few mistakes as I can. Um, I did want to thank the committee that put this on. Now, if I do everybody by name, I'm in real trouble. Peg Curtis chaired the committee, so I want to thank Peg Curtis. Oh, yeah. My wife, Terry Lindy, was behind the scenes on just about everything, so I have to thank my wife. Larry Curtis handled the ad booklet, and he's our treasurer collecting tickets at the door. And we have a whole bunch of other people that stepped up to the plate and did things behind the scenes. This is our 14th annual Gene Sullivan Breakfast. My name is Mark Lindy. I'm your chairman of the Democratic City Committee. And I knew Gene, and Gene was one of the people that was always around here, behind the scenes, smiling, with a big smile on her face. Um, uh, by the way, the last sign that falls down behind me wins the raffle, <laughs> even though we can't do raffles. We got special non-stick tape. As you can see, it's non-stick. So if it goes down behind me, uh, John Drzezinska said that might be an omen for him, so we'll see. Okay. I'm going to start off. Um, I wanted to read a quick email that Archie Gormley sent me from Colorado. Archie Gormley is the president of local firefighters 144, and they're a big supporter of the Democratic Party in this breakfast. They are in Colorado at an International Association of Fallen Firefighters Memorial event where they are acknowledging the members that gave the ultimate sacrifice on March 10th, 1941, and to see that their names were placed on this wall. So that was our strand fire in 1941. So Archie, I, I told him he is in a better place, okay, but the strand was a, a significant historical event to Brockton, and we all know the beautiful memorial that's downtown. Um, at the last convention, they voted to re-erect the monument and include our members that passed away in the line of duty from the beginning of the IAFF, International Association of Firefighters, which was formed in February 1918, and, and, and uh, Archie is a really good friend of Red Sullivan, so I went over and told Red before the breakfast that, uh, that he wasn't going to be here because Archie's a regular here. Let me get it kicked off with the elected officials, and then I'm going to try to do the candidates, and, and we can either do one of two things. We can hold your applause till the end, or we can do the one clap thing, and then we can move forward, okay? And this is in no particular order. This is when people signed in, or when I caught their eye, or when someone came up and told me. Um, I guess our highest ranking state official in the room is our state auditor, Suzanne Buck. We, we have our current Plymouth County Commissioner, uh, Greg Hanley. We are graced with two state representatives who are here, Michael Brady, our current state representative. And Michelle Dubois, who is our st new state representative and city council from Ward 6. Claire Cronin did want me to tell you that she had an unfortunate accident. She's okay, but walking is not, uh, you know, an easy thing for her right now. So she did say to say hello. Um, we have John Buckley, the Plymouth County Register of Deeds, in the back. I introduced myself, but I represent the Southeastern Regional School Committee along with my colleague, Wayne McAllister, who I'd like you to keep in, in your prayers. He's not well. Bob Creeden, our Plymouth County Clerk of Courts. 
and Geraldine Creeden, who was our state representative, right along beside him. We have Alex Bazanson, who is an Abington selectman, right on the border over here. Alex. Paul Stadesky, City Councilor from Ward 4. Shirley Asap, City Councilor from Ward 7. Now that one I should let you continue to clap because the beautiful centerpieces that are on your table were all donated by Shirley and put together by Shirley. We have a few people from the Democratic State Committee. We have our own Jackie Bonarigo. You all know Red's been a state committee member for years. We have Donna Smith and Bob Cassidy. Ward 1 City Councilor Tim Cruz. Ward 3 City Councilor Dennis Aneri. Rob Brady, who is an Avon selectman, Mike Brady's brother. Matt McDonough, our Plymouth County Register of Probate. And I'm going to get to candidates who are also elected officials, so that's where they'll fit into the mix. We have uh, Christopher McMillan, who is a former Ward 7 Councilor candidate for mayor. And, and do keep in mind that I'm introducing Democrats today because we are the Brockton Democratic City Committee and it is a nonpartisan election, but uh, we want our Democratic candidates to get in. Jacob Tagger, who's also a Democrat, running for mayor. We have Robert Sullivan, who's a city councilor at large candidate for renomination in the back of the room. We have Adias Pierre, who's running for Councilor at Large. We have Shayna Barnes, who's running for re-election. She's a current Councilor at Large. We have Susan DeCastro, who's a candidate for Councilor at Large. And we have our own Jerry Smith, who is our Secretary to the Brockton Democratic City Committee, running for Secretary at Large. The counter line. Okay, for uh, school committee in Ward 3, I'm doing the contested elections right now. We have Ed Miller, who is a candidate, former vice chair, former chair of the County League. Uh, we have Blessing Rogers, who's a candidate for Ward 3 school committee. Blessing Rogers. Um, I don't see the candidates for Ward 4, unless they snuck in later. Who's Ward? I didn't see you. Tony Branch, right? Bishop Tony Branch. The rule of politics 101 is sign in on the list and make sure the MC has it. Okay. Uh, Ward 6, City Council. There are three candidates, two of them are Democrats. I'm going to introduce Steve Foote, the past chair of the Democratic City Committee and candidate for Ward 6. And John Drzinskis, candidate for Ward 6, City Council. Now, also in the room, I saw out of the corner of my eye, and this is the next election. I already introduced Ollie Spears as running for Ward 5 City Council. That's the next round, which starts on, on Tuesday, after the, uh, Wednesday after this one's over. Ann Beauregard's running for City Council in Ward 5. Um, Tim Sullivan, who is a Democrat, who was a former school committee member running for school committee in Ward 7. And uh, I'm just curious if there are any other candidates that are here that are running in this election or the November election. Jay Stewart, who is not running. He's running for breakfast right now. There you go. Okay. Um, just to let you all know, um, the reason we're here today is to pump up the party, pump up voter participation, get people involved, and this is a great turnout, so give yourselves a round of applause. Um, we're here to remember Jean and honor her because um, there was no better behind-the-scenes Democrat than Jean. 
Paul was the in front of the scenes Democrat. He was the guy that I met after Jimmy Carter came and spoke to Brock and I, and he was involved in, I worked in the Democratic campaign headquarters with him, right where the DA's office is, with Linda Bell's audit. We had to work for candidates, and that was the year Plymouth County came back strong and elected a Democrat pretty much to every office. So Red Sullivan um, taught me a lot of good things, and we had a lot of fun. And he is the guy that you saw behind the desk, but Gene was right there beside him every step of the way. And uh, I miss Jean. I love the picture. We put the same picture on the book every year, which is her dancing on the beach. And that was Jean. Jean had a twinkle in her eye, and she just would give you a wink. And uh, every time we're here, e even if we're fighting with each other, Jean would say, oh, come on. Can't we all just get along? Okay? I miss her. Um, I did ask Red if he wanted to say a, a word or two, so I'm going to let him speak first. He gets the first word and probably the last word. Okay, so give a round of applause to Father Sullivan and I'm going to the mic to him. Good morning, everybody. It's, uh, it brings back a lot of old memories from 14 years ago. And like they said, my wife, she was the best. She was always out, out there with me. Any, any place I left, went, if it was California or any place, my wife was right beside me. And of course, I missed her a lot. But now I'd like to thank all, all of you for coming to the 14th Gene Memorial Breakfast. And I thank you very much and good luck, candidates. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. We lost Brady from the back of the wall. That must be a good omen. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, what, I, what I'm going to do now, and I'm going to try to use um, ballot order. I've been, um, I have on the door of my office at work air traffic controller because that's what I get to do at work. But with the candidates and so many of them, I've been juggling candidates. We have brought back, democratically speaking, I've had all the Democrats on, democratically speaking, that I could get that contacted me, and I'll be doing round two. So everyone will get to see the new list. Um, but I want to bring up a few people that are elected officials um, running. Who do we lose? Ollie. Ollie, your sign. You lost your sign, too. Okay. I'm going to start with, um, make sure i got so many lists here that everybody's handed me that I'm going to look at the top. I would like to bring up our, um, our state auditor, Suzanne Bump. Um, Suzanne Bump is... Uh, doing a great job. She's a wonderful person. Uh, Lauren DiFilippo, who used to work in the mayor's office, works for her now. And uh, we're lucky to have her as a Democrat. We're lucky that she does all the oversight she does. And uh, I'm going to have Suzanne talk about why democratic ideals are so important. I just told her about 10 minutes ago, so she's thrilled to death. <laughs> no, indeed, I am thrilled to death. Thank you so much. Thank you. I am delighted to be here. Mark actually um, left off the most important um, element of my credentials uh, to be here today and that is, well I guess there are a couple of them. One is that of course that I've known Red for over 30, uh, 30 years through democratic politics but more importantly I'm a local girl. I grew up in Whitman. Uh, some of, we were just, where's the gal that I was talking to about being a graduate of Cardinal Spellman High School? Uh, Barbara Caccini, a Brockton resident, uh, is uh, <laughs> now was a Whitman resident. I used to babysit for her kids. And where is my cousin Mal? Uh, and Mal is sitting there too. So I uh, and, and Mom is now living at the Emanuel House uh, residence, and she is loving it. Uh, and, and I just met a member of the class, Brockton High School class of 1945. They just celebrated their reunion uh, <laughs> the other day. So, okay, wonderful, wonderful to be back here in the hall to help you, to help you remember the traditions that were established by, uh, by Gene Sullivan, a grassroots activity, uh, and to celebrate, as Mark said, our democratic values. Some of us uh, spent yesterday in Springfield at the Democratic State Convention, and we heard from our state, uh, United States Senators Elizabeth Warren and Ed Markey, who are doing a splendid job on our behalf, reminding 
reminding their colleagues in Washington, unfortunately their colleagues who hold the levers of power in Washington, uh, that there is a broad policy agenda that we needs to be pursued if we are going to move this country forward. We can't afford to go backwards at the, at the federal level or at the state level for that matter, um, led by the Republicans and the Tea Partiers. And that brings me to one candidate about whom I just want to say a couple of words uh, right now, and that is Representative Michael Brady, who is running to succeed our dear friends, the late state Senator Tom Kennedy. I can't tell you, where are you, Michael? I can't tell you, folks, how important it is that this seat stay Democratic. For those of us... us at the at the state level who we run who are you know run state statewide look at the election map we are looking to see where the democratic votes are coming from and where the republican votes are coming from and i've got to tell you if you look at the red and the blue communities on that map it is frightening because the the red cities and towns are spreading out they are, and, and we have an ever-shrinking number of solidly democratic communities. Brockton has always been in the democratic column. We've got to keep it in the democratic column. We need you. We need you to get out there. We need you to get out there because the Republicans, the Republicans are trying to appeal to our beleaguered middle class, our um, our retirees who are facing in many instances a poverty level existence because their pension plans have been taken away. So the Republicans have caught on to the catchphrase uh, uh, economic inequality, right? Economic inequality. And they toss it off just to try to show some affinity uh, with the middle class and with retirees. But we know that we have been fighting the fight for economic and social justice for a hundred years. Think of all of the labor leaders that have gone ahead of us. Think of our presidents, uh, Roosevelt and Kennedy and, and Lyndon Johnson, all of whom understood that it took a wide array of social and economic programs uh, and criminal justice programs as well in order to build up a middle class and support a life of dignity and opportunity. And the Republicans are taking that away. And we don't want to see that happen at the level of Massachusetts. We say not in Massachusetts will the Republicans and the Tea Party take over and turn back the clock. Not will we in Massachusetts will we allow them to, to uh, slow down our forward progress. And I remember when I first got involved in politics, my hometown of Whitman was represented by a Democrat. And it, uh, and then it was it, who was Bob Tian, and then it was represented by Emmett Hayes. And now my hometown has gone Republican in how many, in how many elections? We can't afford to see that. We can't afford to see that happen. We need you to be solidly behind Michael Brady to be out there doing all that hard work. vote in the Senate makes a difference. We've got, we're going back to the era of Bill Weld. I'm sorry, I hope, I hope nobody in this audience has uh, voted for, uh, for Charlie Baker, but he is another Bill Weld. He is a wolf in sheep's clothing, Pre presents a very pleasant facade and has a very aggressive anti-worker, anti-opportunity agenda. We can't let them get another vote. We've got to get Michael Brady elected. So thank you all for the hard work we're doing. Thank you. Now I do have a lot of candidates in a room when we're going to let them all speak. And this election is Tuesday. I do. I, I asked Michael if he wanted to speak. He said he would say a few words. So I want Michael to come up here and say a few words because Suzanne, who is a local 
area person. I was there at her inauguration at Spelman with Senator Kennedy. It was wonderful that she brought that right out to her own community. She's very proud. Michael, come on up and uh, say a few words on behalf of yourself. A great Democrat, Mike Brady. Thank you, Mike. And uh, let's give the auditor, Suzanne Bob, a round of applause again. Thank you. Thank you for your kind words. And uh, we have to stay together here as Democrats in the area. Uh, I want to also give Councilman Jay Stewart a round of applause for his years of service. He's moving on. I want to thank everybody who came today. It's so important, as we mentioned, to stick together as Democrats. And we wouldn't be here, and I wouldn't be here, as a Democrat of the Democratic City Committee of the Plymouth County League or the Democratic State Committee, if not for my good friend Red Sullivan. So let's give him a round of applause. So if you're wondering how I got involved with all these political things, it's Red and Gene Sullivan's fault. So let's give, you know, you can blame it on that. But thank you, Red, from the bottom of our heart. You, a lot of us Democrats wouldn't be here with it, you and all your family support. So thank you again. Now, as the auditor mentioned, this is a very important election. Tom Kennedy did a tremendous job on behalf of our constituency in the 2nd Plymouth Bristol District, which goes from the town of Northeastern, all of the city of Brockton, Whitman, Hanson, Halifax, Hanover, East Bridgewater, and Plimpton. And we've got to get the word out because a lot of people are getting confused out there. I was talking with some of our elected officials today over the weekend. Everyone's saying, oh, I'll be with you, Mike, on Tuesday. Well, I'm not on the ballot on Tuesday. There's a city election on Tuesday. So that's for the mayor and the city council and the school committee, which is a very important election. We need to get everybody out to vote for the election on Tuesday. But the primary date is October 6th. And we've got to get that word out there because there's a lot of confusion and misinformation out there about this election. So the state senate election is on October 6th. And please... You've got to get everybody out to vote. We've got to spread the word. I need volunteers. Anybody who wants to get involved in my campaign, I know a lot of the people in the room are supporting me today, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. But we need to get more people involved because, as Susan and Bob mentioned, there is a person from the other ticket that's going to be on the ballot in November. We don't want to even mention his name, but Whitman is a predominantly Democratic town, and he won the town of Whitman in that district, and he beat a great... Democratic family a couple of years ago, and he hasn't had good, strong support since. So we got to not take this election for granted. The GOP and the, and the Republicans are pouring millions and millions of dollars, not only to this special election, but they're going to come after all the Democratic colleagues of ours next year. They've already warned us, they've prepared, they're spending a lot of money. So I please ask you, I can't take this for granted. Please don't think I'm going to win on, on October 6th for granted because we got to get everybody out to vote. And it's not just about me, it's about our democratic values and party all the way at the state level and the federal level. Because they're looking to go after our federal delegation too. So thank you for all your support. Please remind everybody, October 6th is the primary. If anyone wants to volunteer, my table's right there. My campaign manager, come by and see us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. So... September 22nd, feel free to stand for Mike Brady. We will be having other events between um, the September uh, 22nd primary and the November 3rd election for the city committee, one which will feature our Democratic candidates. Um, so I, that was good that everybody stood because uh, I believe in the back of the room there's something I need to bring forward to the front of the room. I did neglect to introduce uh, Marlon Green, who's a candidate for Ward 3 City Council. Thank you, Auditor. Thank you very much. He's right over there in the corner. Okay, uh, we found out today, can we get that closer to the front? We found out uh, recently that uh, somebody in the room happens to be having a very special birthday today. Um, I wonder who that could be. Does anybody have a clue other than his family members? Red Sullivan has his birthday today. So we have a cake for him. 
And if everybody, I can't sing, so please help me out here. If everybody could sing to Red, happy birthday while we wheel the cake over. We're going to bring it over closer to him. Um, we won't count how many birthdays at this point, but we're, we're very happy that Red is with us. And I'm very happy for all that Red's done for this party and for me personally. So, um, who has a good singing voice that'll take the mic for a Okay, everybody, you ready? You red. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Red. Happy birthday to you. to blow out the candles and be very careful with that cake. Don't hit me with it. There's plenty of hot air in this room, Red, so go for it. Come on. <laughs> okay. Ready? Go the other way, kids. Jackie has the knife, so be careful. Um, <laughs> We need the tray back, so we're going to cut it. People will be able to get cake. Yes. Bill? I will. I will. I will. Um, I did want to also thank all the great union members that are here, past and present, because uh, unions built the Democratic Party, and we want to remember that, especially at Election Day. Um, Archie, as you know, is away, but there are other unions that supported us. There's in the book. Red's always been a big union supporter, so give the unions a round of applause. Okay, I'm going to start the candidates, and I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use ballot order because that makes more sense, and then I don't get in trouble. Um, we're going to start with we have two Democratic candidates for the preliminary election for mayor of the city of Brockton, and I'm going to start in ballot order with uh, Christopher McMillan, if Chris could come up to the front. The rule is two to three minutes. If you do a little less, that's even better. We can get the next round in, too. But uh, Christopher, come on back here and uh, talk about your candidacy and yourself. Thank you, Mark. Uh, no one really calls me Christopher anymore, so Chris is great. I, I appreciate it. But uh, thank you all for being here to, uh, this morning. It's a great memorial breakfast. Uh, it's for us, the Democrats. Uh, right now, I'm running for mayor because I, I feel that Brockton is in dire needs for a change. Uh, we're hurting right now. The crime is up, as we all know. And basically, the money that this mayor has been spending is outrageous. So, with that said, uh, with Mr. Tagger, Jacob, both Jacob and I are Democrats. And if one of us gets through and the other one doesn't, we're teaming up because we need a Democrat. We have to stick together. Right now, we have an independent in there as the mayor. And the independent is not doing a good job. We need a Democrat in there. Someone is out for the people. Someone is out for every, all their social services. So with, on the second, uh, 22nd of September, next Tuesday, uh, I, I, I would appreciate your vote, but if you don't vote for me, vote for another Democrat, which is Jacob. So I'm, I'm telling you right now, we need a desperate change in this city. Uh, we need to bring it back to where it was before, where a mayor is conscious of wh what's, go what's working and what's not. And when it's not working, we'll change it up. Right now, it's not what he's going on right now as far as the safety and the crime. It's not working. So 
With that said, I want to thank you very much for allowing me to speak this morning, and have a great North Preface. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Chris. Jacob Tagger is uh, number two on the ballot, and he's a good Democrat. He's our vice chair in uh, Ward 6. Come on up, Jacob. Keep the party going. I'm going to bring on a county candidate at some point in between as well, but here's <coughs> Jacob. First of all, good morning to everyone. The, the French toast, whatever that was, was pretty good, so I like it. Um, oh, I stay over there. The this mic, right, you want to be on TV? I don't want to be on TV, sir. Um, one, I'm so proud to be up here. Um, as a young person, I, I always you know, wanted to be involved in my community. Uh, I won't say his name because I don't want to implicate him in getting me involved in the Democratic City Committee. Um, but you know, it's, it's all about being involved in your community and in the democratic process. So I all, every time I get up and speak to anyone, I always want to express how happy and proud I am to be a part of this. I really am extremely excited. Uh, Mr. McMillan, I worked on his campaign before you know, supporting uh, Mayor Balzardi last time. I've never supported the current mayor, never, and I won't. I, I don't think he's the right, no, he's not the right choice for the city. Um, and we are going to keep it a Democratic mayor. Definitely going to do that. I really like to shake things up, and Mr. Mac Miller and I go at it after the primaries, and Bill can work for the next couple of months, you know, and, and keep the seat warm. Um, I, I also want to recognize some some people that were mentors to me that are in the room. I I honestly get goosebumps every time I see someone that I grew up with, and that was a mentor to me. Uh, Mr. Robert Jarvis. Mr. Jarvis is, was the Brockton High School principal. And it really feels good um, to have somebody whom I respected and was a mentor to me come up to me when I come in and say, oh, he's proud of me. That means a lot. Mr. and Mrs. Creedon, who were at my Brockton High School graduation, um, you know, very supportive and mentors. And although we don't speak all the time, I just want to let you guys know I appreciate you. I do. Um, who else is here? Who else? So there, you know, again, like I said, there's, there's a lot of people here that, that I believe in and that believe in me. Of course, Mr. Lindy, I'm very proud that he's now our chairperson for the Democratic City Committee. I'm extremely proud of yourself. I mean, you're always fair, always fair and have a, a high level of integrity, and you've been a mentor to me, and I've known you for over 20 years now, and I appreciate the, the man you are. I mean that. Um, so like I said, I, I'm going to tell you guys a real quick story. And uh, politicians know you, everyone has a canned speech. They call it canned speech. I'm learning. So you know, it's that speech that they say every single time. Um, and, and you know, I, I need to speak about my dad. M Mr. Lindy messed up a few times. He called me Jacob L. Tagger. I'm Jacob L. Tagger Jr. I am very proud to represent my dad, who is no longer here. I'm extremely proud. Every time I drive by a sign and I see my dad's name, it means more to you more to me than I can explain. So I'm going to tell you a story that my dad told, and I've been telling it the past couple of times I've been in, at a public speaking event. And when I was about eight years old, I, my dad used to drive me around Brockton, whether it was through DW or if we were cutting through Hill Street when it was open to go fishing wherever my dad took us. So I said to my dad one day, I said, Daddy, when I get older, I said, I want to be a doctor. And my father said, I said, would you be proud of me? And he goes, boy, I don't care if, you're, if you collect cans. I want you to collect the most cans in the city of Brockton. And I looked at him and I said, Dad, why do you want me to collect cans? I want to be a doctor. And he goes, oh, boy, you don't get it now, but you'll get it when you're older. You will get it when you're older. And I went home and asked my mom. She couldn't explain it to me. And I, I forget what age I was. It was maybe late teens, early 20s. I realized what my dad was saying. What my dad was telling me that no matter what I do, always try to be the best. And I believe that's what Brockton is. I believe Brockton has been great and Brockton is going to be great again. And I do believe that I am the right person to bring our community together and to work towards that greatness. I strongly believe that. I, I just want to make sure I tell you all thank you um, for having me here. I could not be more proud to be among, among so many good people. Um, I also want to thank my team, who's been working extremely hard. They've hit over 20,000 houses. One of my volunteers, when we agreed to do this, 
I said, you know what? We didn't have a lot of support. I'm not wrapping it up yet. I said, we had, I have to recognize them. I got you, sir. Um, I, I want to recognize my team because they have blisters on their feet and they're, bleed, they're doing so much for me. And my friend Donna, I don't know where she's hiding or whatever, but we said, you know what? Remember, I said, we're probably going to have to walk this whole city by ourselves. And she said, I'm with you. And she has her flip flops, and we're retiring those flip flops in City Hall. <laughs> Because you've been right there side by side with me and you know other people at my table whom I love. The, the scariest thing for me is not losing this election, is not having you guys the day after. You know what I mean? The, the friendships that we have now are so important to me. But we're going to win anyways. We're going to be hanging out. Hopefully we're going against Mr. McMillan on Wednesday. But thank you guys. Have a good day. Thank you, Jacob. Councilor at Large has uh, four seats on the City Council, but 13 candidates in the preliminary election. They're not all here, but uh, uh, luck of the draw got uh, Robert Sullivan number one on the ballot, um, and he's a candidate for re-election. Uh, everybody knows Bob Sullivan. He's a hard worker here in Brockton, and I'm going to let him say a few words. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I want to, uh, first of all, uh, thank each and every one of you good Democrats for being here. Uh, I want to uh, welcome and congratulate and wish a happy birthday to Red Sullivan, the Sullivan family, and the, the Stadensky family as well. Uh, again, if we could give a round of applause. Um, I, I, uh, I proudly uh, serve as a councilor at large for the entire city of Brockton for the last 10 years. During that time, my colleagues elected me two times as a council president. I am a candidate for re-election. Um, I, I'm hoping on Tuesday, first of all, please go out there and vote. We need a big turnout. Mr. McGarry was saying maybe 12%. Timmy Cruz and I were saying maybe, maybe that, and that's the key word, maybe. But we need to make sure that Democrats, these, get elected. I know it's nonpartisan, but at the end of the day, we know who is a Democrat and who is not. And we need to make sure that Democrats get in there. I also just want to echo the sentiments. Uh, I want to thank three of my colleagues, uh, Democrats all, that are not running again. Uh, state, I want a newest state representative, uh, Michelle Dubois, is not seeking re-election. I want to thank Councilor Lodge, Jay Stewart, and also Ward 5 Councilor Dennis Tanapoli. Three good public servants, good people, and good Democrats, all of them, so we can thank them. Let's make sure Mike Brady gets elected. That's the bottom line. Let's make sure Michael gets in there. Now, when it comes to mayor, we need to make sure these two fine gentlemen just get out there and vote. I'd love to see you on Tuesday. Uh, 8 o'clock when the polls end, that is Chris and, and Jacob going head-to-head -head in November. We need that, so make sure that happens. But uh, I, uh, I stand before you today proudly. Uh, I believe during tough economic times, you need to have proven leadership and experience. And I think for the last 10 years, I've been a vocal advocate for the residents, the city employees, and for the businesses. So I respectfully and humbly are asking you, you can go to the polls on Tuesday, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. You can cast four votes for Councilor Lodge. And I'm asking you to cast one for me. It really, really means a lot. I'm a Brockton guy, married a Brockton gal. We're raising our kids here in the city of champions. I also have been endorsed proudly by uh, three respective unions, great unions all. Uh, uh, Local 144, the Brockton Firefighters is endorsed by re-election. The Brockton Police Patrolman Association. And just the other day, uh, the Plymouth Bristol Central Labor Council endorsed me. And you know, unions are really important and special to my family. I told this a couple years ago. And then Representative Christine Canavan came up to me and said, geez, that story really speaks volumes. My grandmother, Ann O'Sullivan, my dad's mom, came over here from Ballyhannas in Ireland. Tommy Kennedy's uh, family came from the same little village up on the west in Mayo. And when my nana came here, you know, she spoke English with the brogue, thick brogue, and she wanted to work in a factory. And what she did, she worked for Franklin Sporting Goods when it was here in Brockton before they went over to Stoughton. And my grandmother tried to organize. And the day she tried to organize, they fired her. So unions is extremely special. It's really the basis of the Democratic Party. So I want to thank all the unions, all the brothers and sisters, all the membership uh, that are working diligently on local campaigns and state campaigns and federal campaigns. At the end of the day, the number one thing is to get out there and vote. So again, I want to thank you. And I ask you please to cast one of your votes on Tuesday. And if I'm fortunate enough to get through again in November 3, Robert Sullivan, I will be number one on the ballot. And I'm always first for Brock. And thank you all. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Um, I'm going in the ballot order of who's here. Uh, next on the ballot is Adias Pierre, who's a candidate for Councilor at Large. Adias?
Good morning. My name is Ajis Pierre, and I'm mourning for City Council at large. I've been living in Breton for more than 20 years. And I know there are so many issues in Breton, such as public safety, homeless, drug addict. I just don't want to talk about those issues, but I want to be part of the solution. That's why I'm running for city council at large. I'm humbly asking you, asking you on Tuesday, September 22nd, to give me your vote. I'm number five on the ballot. If you give me that chance to serve you, I will always work with you and fight for you. Because I believe in Wharton, my kids, my wife, my family live in Wharton, and we are here to say, therefore, I'm here to fight for Wharton that I love. <laughs> Remember, you have a power in your hand, it's your ballot. If you don't use it wisely, you're going to use it against you. If you don't go out to vote, people are going to vote against you. Please, consider me to give me my, your vote on September 22nd, because I will fight for you. I would like to close with a quote of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He said, Men often hate each other because they fear each other. They fear each other because they don't know each other. They don't know each other because they don't communicate with each other. They don't communicate it with each other because they separate. Me, Adjie Pierre, as your next city council at large, I will be the bridge to have that connection because we are one Bortonian and we are here to stay together. Thank you very much. Thank you. Vote for me on September 22nd because I will fight for you. I'm number five on the ballot. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alice. Thank you, Alice. Next. Is it still working? Uh oh. I hope we're not losing the battery. Here we go. Next up on the ballot um, of the people that are here is Shana Barnes, who's a current counselor at large and candidate for re-election. Shana Barnes. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank you for, first of all, for being Democrats. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, thank you. <laughs> The city of Brockton, the city of Brockton, we're known for being fighters. We're known for taking a little bit of something and turning it into something huge. And that's what we do here um, as Democrats every single day. We take our beliefs, we, our beliefs, we take our values, and we make it into community efforts. We, uh, we built things, we've, we've come together, and that's what we want to do. And this election on Tuesday, we'll be able to, once again, to show what we can do. And um, I'm asking for your vote. I am number eight, as Mark said, on the ballot on Tuesday. I am uh, running for re-election. I've had an amazing, amazing, amazing first term. And I look so forward uh, to being able to represent you again, bringing your voice to the council chamber uh, with my, my colleagues and friends in government. I've learned so much, and I still have more to learn. But th uh, this year, I promise to actually bring some uh, initiatives forward. I have some new things that I want to do, and I think together we can do them. And, and I think that um, the ideas and initiatives that I want to bring forward are for the betterment of the city. So taking little ideas and making something big out of it. And that's what we do, and that's why I'm asking, humbly asking for your vote on the 22nd. I want to personally wish Red a happy, happy, happy birthday. He was, when I first started working for uh, Stephen Lynch, he was one of the first persons to call to say, this is what you need to do, this is what you need to know, this is who you need to talk to, and, um, and I'm forever, forever grateful for him and for his, uh, his tutelage and his guidance and um, his support over the years, and, and I want to say happy birthday to you. So once again, number eight on the ballot, I look forward to serving you all again uh, my second term, and have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie.
We're going to see which is the last sign standing. Um, next up on the ballot, I guess number nine, is Susan DeCastro. Uh, she is a candidate for a counselor at large. Remember, we get to pick four. Well, good morning, everyone. As Mark said, my name is Susan DeCastro. I'm number nine on the ballot under counselor at large. Um, I'm so grateful to be here today. Um, I had the very fine pleasure to sit next to Red Sullivan during my five years on the planning board. He was whispering in my ear and giving me guidance and, and saying all kinds of interesting things like, what does this guy have to say? And all sorts of things. And I'm very grateful to his kindness to me in my years on the planning board. Well. I, I keep telling the same story. I've lived in Brockton for 25 years. I'm married to a native by the name of John Tuig. We're raising two teenage boys. That alone make, should make you think twice if I'm surviving all this. Um, I'm a veteran of the Planning Board and the Zoning Board of Appeals. I've volunteered at the Charity Guild for 16 years. We feed people in our food pantry and we clothe people in our thrift store. Um, I've spoken with so many people at events like this, going door to door. Um, so many Brockton residents have been so kind to me. And it occurs to me that after telling my little story, there are things you don't know about me. And so I'd just like to quickly share three things you don't know about me that are central to why I'm running for the open seat on the Brockton City Council. Um, and the first one is, looking back over my life, I realize I've repeatedly used my time to build groups of people who are moving in the same direction in a positive fashion. In college, I took a club and built it into the largest club on campus in two years. As a young attorney, I joined the Organization of Real Estate Attorneys. Um, I was writing forms that all attorneys could use that were even-handed in their approach to real estate matters. And six years later, I ended up on the executive board and a, mem a chairman of the Practice Standards Committee, telling attorneys all over the state how they should practice real estate law. When I joined the Charity Guild in 1999, it was having growing pains, and it, the board was experiencing a lot of turmoil. I did a lot of listening. I led some board retreats, and we moved forward by buying our own headquarters, which we're still located in at 501 Maid Street. And last year we served nearly 16,000 people with an emergency three-day supply of food. On the planning board most recently, I encouraged all the planning board members to work together to prepare for the meetings and to make our decisions guided by, by what's best for Brockton and for our Brockton neighborhoods. So I, I believe I truly bring a proven ability to unite people for a common goal, despite differences in ideology and personality, and I think that will serve me well on the City Council. Um, the second thing that I do, or that I'd like to share, is my view on finances, budgets, and handling of money. Most of you don't know, I didn't grow up in Massachusetts, I grew up in Pennsylvania, and in fact, I'm a coal miner's granddaughter. And I'm, I was raised by good, honest people of modest means. I, I was raised by sales shoppers and users of coupons. And honestly, I could promise you that I will treat the city's revenues like it's my own money. Um, people are demanding financial accountability. That's been made very clear to me in my travels, door knocking and talking to people all over the city. I've read the charter. I've read our city budget, at least the current one. I've read home rule petitions and our ordinances. I will seek to restore the checks and balances that are set out in our city laws. Um, I, I will spend the money like it's my own, and I hope, I, I think that qualifies me, and I hope that you will support me as a result. And the last thing you don't know about me is that I'm a planner, and how can you be somewhat a busy attorney's wife, a mother, an attorney of, on my own right, and a volunteer, and not be a planner? I start and end my day with a pad of paper, with a to-do list, and also hopes and dreams. I had a wonderful father-in-law. His name was Eddie Tuig. He was a lifelong Brocktonian. And he used to say, plan your work and work your plan. 
And I strongly believe, based on living here 25 years and reading the newspaper and talking to other people, that our city, that Brockton, perennially suffers from reacting instead of proactively facing challenges. I believe we react to outside forces instead of planning or identifying our goals and objections, or and objectives, forgive me. Um, we actually have an ordinance under the section that governs the planning board that creates, uh, that calls on the planning board to create a master plan. And it's more than just a plan for how we're going to use our, our city real estate or, or, how, or uh, zoning. It's, it has to do with planning businesses, jobs, housing, and educational goals. I think it's fair to say that the divisive issues that are currently plaguing our city right now are in large measure the direct result of not planning for the future of Brockton. Now there have been past attempts to plan, but they've been success unsuccessful. I pledge I'll focus on Brockton creating a master plan. You know, someone smarter than me once said, when we fail to plan, we plan to fail. I, I pledge that I will make sure if I'm elected, or I should say when I'm elected, that we create a master plan that will take us into the future. So you know my background, you know what my hopes and dreams are. I'm number nine on the ballot. Please vote for me for counselor at large. Thank you. Number 13 on the ballot is Doree Smith. She's the secretary of the Brockton City Committee. And uh, where is Doree? She's door knocking. Well, if you know Doris, Doris is known for door knocking. She's been in 30 plus campaigns. And uh, she's our secretary, so she's the one that sends you out the notices and helps us out. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't see that she left. We're going to go again to the contested races, but I'm going to interrupt the Brockton City Preliminary Election for a county announcement. There's a gentleman in the room who's, a, who's currently serving in county government. There's a few of them, but uh, one of them is happening to run for re-election. I told him I'd give him two minutes. Greg Hanley, come on up. He's our current Plymouth County Commissioner. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for this wonderful day today, folks. I appreciate the fact that everyone's here supporting the Sullivan family, but more importantly, celebrating what we've got to do as Democrats. Uh, three years ago, I was elected county commissioner, and I'm proud and honored to be here to announce to you today that I'm running as a candidate for re-election as your county candidate commissioner. <laughs> for the last three years, my thanks to you, everyone in the room, is to work hard on behalf of fellow Democrats. I work for Congressman Lynch, I work for Deb Goldberg, I work for Matt uh, McDonough. And that's the best way I know how to say thank you. I chopped the ticket in that last election, 128,000 votes. 28,000 of those votes came from right here, the city of Brockton. That's the power of the city of champions. And I know everyone's talked about Michael Brady's campaign. I see the rest of his district, folks. The opposition is unified. They are working harder than any other time that I've ever seen a Republican campaign work. So what's the difference? It's the Brockton difference. We need to organize. We need to fight. If we fight, we win. Unity equals what? Victory. So we need each and every one of you folks to get on board with that campaign. I know people have talked about it in the room. It is that important that we do not lose a Democratic seat. Because being a county official, if I don't have my county delegation being Democrat, I can't achieve your initiatives. So with that, I do want to highlight one highlight of my whole political career so far. Where's Megan from Baypath? There she is right over there. Uh, and if I could call up uh, Mike Brady and Tim Cruz, Last year on St. Patrick's Day, over at Bay Path Rehab, we, Bay Point, excuse me, Bay Path's where I'm going for rehab after this election, but Bay Point, and thank you Brockton Cable for being here, because this is going to be a production, so if you'll follow me, and if I can have these two young gentlemen, we had the great pleasure and honor to dedicate ourselves in musical harmony to our good friend Red Sullivan, 
We were all over at uh, okay. come on over, <laughs> Megan. Come on over. There's a camera right here. We're on TV. Oh, Say hi to all the folks in Brockton. And if, if the, the Lord Mayor, I'm sorry, Mr. Clean could join us. Uh, come on up, because he, like, the, well, he yeah, likes to sing as well. Patriots got it. And Mark, I promise two minutes. But this song will be a short one. We're just going to sing the chorus okay. of Irish Eyes Are Smiling in honor of our friend uh, Red Sullivan. And it's an easy song, so we're going to sing it once, and I'm going to ask you all to join in. You ready? When Irish eyes are smiling, sure it's like a morning spring. In a little Irish laughter, you can hear the angels sing. When Irish eyes are happy, all the world seems bright and gay. couple of things coming up. I know John Buckley is having his annual Galway West Oyster Festival Thursday, September 24th at, where else? J.P. Ryan's Tavern right in Abington. And Scott Becky, who's running for sheriff, sorry about that before, he's doing his campaign kickoff October 30th down in Plymouth at the Elks, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so make sure the county, uh, what they're telling you folks is true. If you look outside of Brockton, Brockton's registered voters right now, 23,000 Democrats, 21,000 unenrolled. We need the unenrolled folks to join us on the Democratic Party and vote for our candidates, and that's really important. So let me keep this going, and I move my list. We're going to go to... Um, City Councilor in Ward 6, we have two Democrats running for office, and I'm going to give them both an opportunity to speak. Uh, first one up, uh, number two on the ballot, is Steve Foote. Steve, come on up. Thank you, Mark. Top back to follow there. Welcome to Ward 6. This is my ward, the ward I've been proud of to be a resident for the last 56 years. I grew up here. I was the third student through the door at the brand new Brookfield School in 1963. I also was in the first class that graduated all four years at the new Brockton High School in 1974. So I've been able to uh, be in the class at Chris and Tube schools in Brockton. Uh, Tim Cruz, our uh, Ward 1 counselor, is also in the class of 74. So uh, we've been here a long time. Uh, my plans for the war, just very quickly, my priorities is keeping the Cary Hill Fire Station open and fully manned. That is critical. Road repair. You can, you can clap on that. And our firefighters do a hell of a job up here. We also do have a hell of a job with EMT services up here, too. That's critical. We have a lot of senior citizens in this work. Uh, also, it's road repairs, which is always a, uh, an issue. And uh, our schools, obviously. And I will have a plan to revitalize the village. It's too extensive to get into here, but we're going to be working on that. Uh, so one of the people that mentioned before me, unions. I have the endorsement of the Sprinkler Fitters Union, Local 550, and the Carpenters Union, Local 624. I'm very proud to have those endorsements. Uh, I've always had a great relationship with the building trades unions, and I believe in them because they have great apprentice programs, they train their people right, and when we do these big projects downtown, like we're doing a whole revitalization, we can count on it, union workers to provide safe buildings for our citizens. And I'm, I'm proud to be uh, endorsed by those two groups. Uh, also, I'd like to just say thank you to uh, my uh, challenger, John Drzinski, who you'll hear from in a minute, for running a very clean race. We've had uh, you know, no, no problems at all. And maybe some people should take a little bit of a lesson for that. So. 
Hopefully on uh, Tuesday you'll get out to vote, and I urge you to please vote for me, Steve Foote, on uh, Tuesday, September 22nd. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. Front and center, right in front of me. Uh, you can get here early, you get the first table. John Drzinskis, uh running for uh, City Council in Ward 6. John, come on up. Thank you, Mark. Good morning. My name is John Brzezinskis, and I'm running for the Ward 6 Brockton City Council seat, as Mark said. I bring greetings to Red Sullivan and his family on this occasion of the Gene Sullivan Memorial Breakfast. And I wanted to thank the Brockton Democratic City Committee for this opportunity to air our views. I also want to thank the VFW Post 1046 for providing us the venue for this great event. I am new to local politics and I'm a retired, a retired retail store manager. Two things that I believe give me a distinct advantage over my opponents. I can devote the time and energy into being a ward counselor, others cannot, and I have no favors I owe any one individual or organization. Steve spoke about endorsements. I am also proud of my endorsements, including current Ward 6 counselor and state representative Michelle Dubois, former Ward 6 counselor and retired Brockton police officer Kathy De Silva, and the, the, co I'm sorry, the Coalition of Social Justice, an organization that advocates positive change in our society. However, I am a, my own man, and these folks and groups do not make my decisions for me or do my thinking for me. Brockton, being the diverse community it is, should give citizens of all races, nationalities, gender, religion, etc., equal opportunity to participate. One of my initiatives is... One of my initiatives is to have Cape Verdean, Haitian, and Spanish-speaking translators at my monthly ward meetings so all folks can understand what is being discussed. The conditions of the roads and the wards are another priority, particularly in the Ashfield and Brookfield sections. I plan on meeting with DPW Commissioner Larry Rowley, one-on-one, -on -one, to see what can be done about this long-standing problem. An ongoing problem also is an understaffed police department and an understaffed and under-equipped fire department, including keeping the Kerry Hill Fire Station open full-time. We must think out of the box to find creative new ways to raise revenue for our first responders to allow them to do their jobs properly. Attracting what I call people-friendly businesses would be a first step in that process. In my humble opinion, building a for-profit for power plant that threatens the environment does not guarantee Brockton Union workers jobs and outsources its generated power to other cities and towns is not an example of a people-friendly business. <laughs> These are just some of my priorities and initiatives, and there are many more, but I am told I have a time limit, and I see Mark out of the corner of my eye. <laughs> I'm willing to meet with anyone to discuss any questions or concerns you might have, either this morning or going forward. My contact information is on the handout card in front of you. I respectfully, humbly ask for your vote on Tuesday, September 22nd for Ward 6 Counselor. I am name number three, John Drzinskis, on the Ward 6 ballot. God bless you all, and God bless the City of Champions in Ward 6. Thank you, and have a great day. Like I said, there are two Democrats running. There is an unenrolled candidate who happens to be here supporting us, but I don't want to get myself in trouble. We're going to go on to the other two contested races for this preliminary, and then if time allows, I'll allow the folks that are running the next round that are here to say a few words as well. We have two candidates, there are three candidates running in Ward 3 for school committee. Um, Alicia Clark is leaving her position after one year. Um, Ed Miller, who's no stranger to the Democratic City Committee, is here. He's a past vice chairman, past, chi past chair of the Plymouth County Democratic League. Ed Miller, come on up.
Thank you for having me here tonight, Mark. I, I want to thank everybody who worked on this breakfast. It was a great breakfast. Um, you know, I'm running for uh, Ward 3 School Committee, and I want to thank all my friends and the people who are volunteering and helping me. First thing most of them said is, you're running for something, what are you crazy? But then they help, they're helping me and they're pushing me on. You know, I, I can say why I'm running. Most of you know me. I, I'm not for the charter schools. I, I want to see more. Thank you. I, I don't see where they make sense. And I want to see, I don't want to see after school programs disappear. I want more. That's what keeps the students busy while, while the parents at work. Well, the people who are running against me, and they're all good people, say, same thing. So I'm going to tell you what's a little different about me. First of all, most of you know me. I'm the former chair of the Plymouth County Democratic League, first vice chair. I'm, I'm the former chair of the, uh, the library trust, board of trustees. And I'm with you. I'm, I'm always volunteering. I also will never support anybody who is for charter schools. Now, we have a, government, a governor who was called Charles Baker, because he's certainly not a Charlie. He's not down in the dirt. He's in the rich golf courses and squash courts. He's for it. And one of the people who are running who is not here today and who is not a Democrat it is who he supported. Now, we have to fight Charles Baker to keep the, those charter schools out of this city. So how can you say you're against charter schools when you support people who are for charter schools, when you support the Scott Browns of the world who do not support public education, want to see the money that should be going to public education that goes to the richest 1% who open these schools so they can take uh, a large chunk off the top. That's what separates me from him. And what separates me, many of you know me because I've been in the trenches with you, holding signs, going door to door, supporting Democrats. And any state, any county, any city that went charter schools, they went downhill. When they went 100%, and you know me, I love the research, I love to look up things, and I won't stand up here and just make something up. Charter schools are not succeeding, and we have to fight that. We have to fight that because every student here, every student in, Bri in Brockton has the right to good education, and we have to give it to them. I'm, I'm not going to make up any promises, I'm gonna, but you know me. And this is my promise. When I'm elected, I will do my best and I will work my hardest, and that's my promise, because I am a dog with a bone, and I don't give up. And I'm going to leave it with this. I have, since I'm running for school committee, I have an assignment for all of you. Since I'm Ward 3, and many of you don't live in Ward 3, I'm asking you to call at least one person you know who lives in Ward 3 and ask them to vote for Elliot Ed Miller. Uh, John and Geraldine Creedon, I, have a, I want two from you. <laughs> because I think you can do it. So again, it, I'm second on the ballot. Anybody who's from Ward 3, second on the ballot, vote for me. I'll work my hardest. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. And Lesson Rogers is here in the room. She's a candidate for school committee in Ward 3. You might have seen her face once in a while on table. Yes? <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here, and I'm highly honored to be here. Um, I am not going to tell you a long story because that's not my style. I am the president of Hope for Children International here in Brooklyn. I work with homeless youth and youths at risk. My job is to work with kids. I'm a lawyer by background, but because of my love for children, I chose to advocate for kids, both locally and internationally. Now, why am I here? Why am I doing this? Because education is very important to me. If you look at my background, I spent half of my life going to school. Even in this process, when I started it, thanks to Jane there, when I told her, oh, I want to run five years ago, she said, oh, you have to go to school. I said, school again? I've spent so much time in the classroom. Now I have to go to Imaj, spend six to nine months learning how to be a politician 
in the, and to run. I said, okay, another classroom, okay, I will keep learning. Now, what do I teach the kids I hang out with? I call it hang out because I have to stoop to their level to speak their language. I teach them to do the right thing, to stay in school, participate, be a part of the process. Now, I want to be a leader that when I tell somebody to do something, I need to lead that way. I need to lead by what I say. And for me, in this race, it's for the kids. Because when I look at them and say, go to school, finish your school, take a risk, I know that I can do that. That I can stand by my own words. I, can, I don't have to close my eyes and pretend to teach them what I'm not. And that is why I'm running. Now, Broughton, we rave of brilliant, honor students. Yes, we do have that. They're doing a great job. But the kids that come to my office that I see, they drop out of school. They're not finishing school. Now, if whatever it is that we are doing with those honor roll students, I am asking that we bridge that gap and bring those other kids that come to my office to that level. Because every child deserves an opportunity to do well. I am asking that we include the kids or the kids that are handicapped, physically challenged, language challenged, that we include them into the same classroom and provide resources for them to do better and give them the opportunity to do better. Because every child deserves to do better. And let me tell you something. The child that we do not help today, tomorrow, is going to be an economic body to us tomorrow. So it is the, the job of every single one of us to contribute in making our children do the best they can do and have equal education and opportunity. Thank you very much, and I ask for your vote on September 22nd. Thank you, Blessing. We have a school committee race in the preliminary in Ward 4. There are three candidates. There are two Democrats. As far as I know, there's only one of them in the room. That's Tony Branch, Bishop Tony yeah. Branch. Good morning, everyone, and God bless you. Clap your hands if you really are a Democrat. I'm sorry. Clap your hands if you really are a Democrat. That, that's better. I'm gonna, I'll be short, um, but I want to first thank Red, the Sullivan family, for this gracious opportunity to have this annual event. God bless you, Red. And may the angels continue to sing with your wife. Now, we all know the story of Bella Bond that has been in the newspapers the last couple of days. Do we know this story? Yes. Do we know this story, Democrats? Yes. We are Democrats because we love children and we want to protect them. I'm not saying that the other side doesn't. But we are Democrats because our platform recognizes that we want to educate and protect children. So give your own selves a hand clap today. People ask me, they say, Bishop, why are you running? I'm not running. I'm not running. I'm running a race, but I'm running for the children that are within our school system. I want them to have the top academic experience that they can have. Not just the honor students, but like Blessing was saying, those that are in between. If you believe that you're a Democrat and we can help every child in the system, give your own self a hand clap. <laughs> Let me tell you about being a Democrat. This should not be about cribs to corrections. Did you hear me? This should not be about cribs to correction. This should be about cribs to success. So I'm running this race because I think the children and our system need a voice. And I want to be the voice. If you feel that they have been marginalized, then I'm the correct candidate to be running for this office. Now there is another Democrat in this race, and there's somebody else in this race too. 
who had been a Republican. I said it, and because that's the truth. Who also did not even vote in the last election. These are not the type of folks that we want elected to office because they are not representing our interests. But if you're a Democrat and you believe for our children, if you're a Democrat and you believe that we can do academic success at the highest level, if you're a Democrat and you believe that Boston can become a national success when it comes to academics, give your own self a hand clap. I don't want to see another story about a Bella Bond, but we're going to see another story about a Bella Bond. We are going to hear another story about a baby Jane Doe. But we in the city of Brockton will be able to hold our heads up high and say when it came to our citizens, we look out for them regardless of color. We look out for them regardless of their religious background. We look out for them regardless of their economic background. Here in Boston, we are going to give children the best experience they can have academically. I'm running for the children, for the parents, and for the school teachers. I'm a Democrat. I've been a Democrat all my life. I'm proud to wear the D on my chest. I'm the Superman D when it comes to Democrats. Your Democrats support me on September 22nd, and let's show not only this city, but let's show the Commonwealth that Democrats today, Democrats tomorrow, and Democrats forever. Thank you. I'm auditioning candidates for a keynote speaker for next year. I think he has my vote. Okay, so those are the races that are contested in September. There's a bunch of races that are contested in um, November, on November 3rd, to be exact. Um, the school committee races in one, two, five, and six are not contested. Three and four are contested now, and seven is going to be contested, and seven is going to be contested a Democrat versus a Republican. We have a Democrat. He served on the school committee before. His name is Tim Sullivan. Tim, come on down, and then I'll go to the council races. Thank you all for your attention. All the races are important, and even if it's not your ward, like people said, call your friends in that ward if you were impressed with one of the candidates today, and tell them to support our Democratic candidates. This is Tim Sullivan. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to thank Red Sullivan. Thank you, Red, and your wife, Jean. You two have been fantastic to me for the last 14 years. I wish you was here. I really miss her. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Lindy. You're doing one hell of a job. I'm going to be brief because I never got the public speaking fear out of my stomach. I still got the butterflies. And yes, I don't like it. I had this job for four years, and I, now I want it back. And yes, I am chasing a Republican. It would be easier to, to have all negative stuff about him, but I was asked not to, so I, I have nothing negative to say about my running mate. What I'm trying to do is say all good stuff about myself. The kids in school today are our next leaders, our next school committee people, our next mayors, our next lawyers, those are the people that we need to take care of. They're our next leaders of tomorrow. I was at a, a senior citizens function about a month ago, and two of the people said to me, well, we don't care about the school committee. I kids are all grown. And I said to them, what are you talking about? The school committee is the largest budget in this city. It's $173 million. Somebody has to spend it. It should be spent on us, our, our children. That's what it's all about. I just want to give a little bit of background about myself. I'm a father of seven from two marriages. I have 13 grandchildren, and they're all Brooklyn school people, as well as uh, their nephews and their cousins. I had done this job well. For four years, I left it. I shouldn't have left it. I want to come back and do it again. Thank you for your support. Thank you.
Thank you, Tim. I tell all my students at Massasoit, um, you just look for the friendliest face in the room and that's who you speak to. It works in my speech class. Um, I did want to do another thank you to Posh Flowers and Shirley Asak for the donations. At the end of the day, whoever has the closest birthday to today gets the centerpiece. So we know that Red got it at his table, but you guys can talk to each other and figure out who can take that beautiful centerpiece home. I, I, that's the only thing I was told to do today. Okay, um, we have city council races coming up in, no, in November, and we have some of the candidates. Um, there will be a candidate in Ward 1 who's a Republican, but we have a good Democrat in that seat right at the moment, and that is Tim Cruz. Everybody knows Tim Cruz. He's been our council president. He's my ward councilor, and I want to give him a chance to say a few words. Tim Cruz. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to take about one minute because I'm going home to watch the Patriots game in a couple minutes. So, uh, And I know I'm preaching to the choir, but I do have a Republican running against. And let me tell you, I have a Republican who is so far to the right that he's uh, the Tea Party loves him. And uh, I think there's a tendency to think, oh, we're all set, we're all set. I need your help. I had a very close election against this fellow t two years ago. He thinks he's going to walk into this seat, and let me tell you, this city will move in a, will turn around and move backwards so quickly if him and his ill get in, who think that we have money hidden, that uh, Jay Con and his bank accounts, to, that we don't need to do any taxes, we can cut the taxes in half and, and still run the schools and still run our police, and that's what him and his ilk are talking about. Uh, unfortunately, that's not the case, and uh, I need all of you to get out. And uh, actually, Bob Creedon and Jerry, I'd like you to call five people each, because you get the vote for me. You can tell your brother John that uh, I'd like some help, too. Sorry, Eddie, I had to do that. But, um, but they've been great, great helpers of mine for many years, as, as I'm back with them. But uh, I, uh, I really need everybody to get out, spread the word. If you're not from Ward 1, get to somebody who's in Ward 1. I've stood for democratic ideals for years, and in fact, I'm just going to take one minute to, uh, I, again, I know I'm preaching to the choir, but I will tell a story that uh, you know, my cousin Tom who passed away this year, and uh, um, we learned at the feet of Ann Buckley, I learned at the feet of Tom what democratic ideals are, and that we're here to take care of each other. And it's the first thing that I always think of as a Democrat is what can we do for each other, and how can we help each other. And then I'm going to tell you a little story that I, I wasn't going to, but uh, Literally, and I'm not a dramatic person, but literally on his deathbed, my brother-in-law Jerry can back me up on this, Tom spoke to me and said, you need to do me one big favor. Get Michael elected for my seat. I want him to have it. So even though it's not Tom's seat, and it wasn't Ann, it's your seat, please, let's keep Tom's wishes. Let's all get out and get Mike elected in November. So thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Our Ward 2 Democrat is not here, Tom Monaghan, but he doesn't have an election. He's probably uh, doing a tailgate or something right now. Um, we have Ward 3 um, incumbent City Councilor Dennis Aneri, City Council President. He's in the back of the room. something red? You're right. The hips need giving out, the knees giving out, but it's always a great pleasure to be here at this breakfast in honor of your wife Jean, and of course in honor of you, and you and I went head to head some many, many years ago. I won. That's right, that's right. But he never came back to run again, but after that, Paul and I have always had respect for one another because Paul is what you have here today, the actual course of what you see as a, as a living Democrat that always stayed a Democrat, got out there no matter what the issue was, he was for the Democratic Party even to this day, he's going to tell you the best stories he can about the Democrats of years ago, Ooh. but 
an honor of him. He is a true, true Democrat. And with that being said, right, happy birthday. And believe me, you know, we think of, think of Jean every day and, and everything that she did uh, did with you for some, so many years ago. Did you hear that, Sonny Cross? There you go. <laughs> but in any case, um, again, it's a great pleasure to be here. And I, and I thank Mark for giving us the opportunity to, to speak. And sometimes I'm not short on words, but I'll try to be short on words. So I guess that's... That's what happens sometimes when uh, you're the council president as well. But um, in any case, uh, for those of you that don't know me, yes, my name is Dennis Adiri, and I am the council from Ward 3, have been the proud council of Ward 3 for the last uh, 12 years, and I have the great honor to say I replaced the former city councilor, Jerry Cassidy, who's here. I replaced him when he stepped down, and uh, it was a great honor for me to become uh, you know, the councilor then. I started some many, many years ago, to be truthful with you. I ran my first race back in 1977. So all the people that are in office today and those that are running, you were just puppies, believe me. And I was too somewhat. But I started back, I think the oldest one that was, well he can go way back, is my good friend, former state representative and state senator Bob Creedon, who was my neighbor. He goes way back, and it's great to see you here today too, Bob, you and Geraldine, it's great to see you. He came from the fighting fifth, is what we call it, the fighting fifth. But in any case... I just want to take a, a couple of minutes to mention, yes, I do have an opponent uh, in this year's election, and I'll be out there doing my job to the best of my ability, and I'll continue to do that job uh, for the people of Ward 3. That's what I've done for the last 12 years. I think my record speaks for itself. Um, with 32 years of, uh, of being able to say I've had in, in, in the political range of the city, uh, many years a proud member of the Brockton School Committee representing the people of Ward 5, and then going back home to my home turf in uh, Ward 3 and being the council there. I think everybody knows what I stand for. Sometimes I'm outspoken, sometimes I shouldn't say things that should be said, but you know something? Sometimes you need to do that. You need to reel it in and let people know that, you know, we are the city of Brockton, we are the city of champions. And I also realize that the city's changing. It's an urban city. You don't work against it, you work with it. And that's what I say. We're all one. We're all one big city, and we're trying to get through it. But I think these next couple of years are going to be very, very important. And I think Councilor Cruz knows that as well. And we need Councilor Cruz back there, to be truthful with you. I mean, I, I fully endorse Councilor Cruz as the Councilor for Ward 1. We don't need people telling us how it should be done and this is how it's going to No, we, we've had that. And, and, uh, and you know, not to even pick, and I, know, I don't know if he's still here, my, my great former city councilor, or, or not former yet, but Councilor Jay Stewart. I know when he, he came into office, we were going to change government. He wanted a key to the office. Where are my secretaries? And we said, doesn't work that way. You're still there, see? I just didn't look back, see? But remember how you're going to change government. But you did change government, and it's been a great pleasure to work with Jace, too, because he's been a great, great uh, advocate to the city of Brockton. But in any case, I'm on the ballot November the 3rd, so if you're here from Ward 3, I need your, your support. And if you if not, please, make the phone call. And Bobby, you've got to make 15 for me, because you know 15 people. All right, then we're on. And I appreciate it. appreciate the support. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Dennis does have a challenger in November, and he is a Democrat, so I'm going to invite him up to the microphone. Uh, Marlon Green, City Council candidate, first time candidate. Thank you, and good morning. Uh, again, my uh, name is Marlon Green. Uh, I am completely new to, uh, to politics, but certainly not new to serving uh, publicly and serving a uh, community. Uh, I'll share with you a little, bit of, um, a little bit about myself, but first, um, there is an incredible sense of selflessness and community in this room, and it is such an honor for me to be a part of this, uh, where there is one voice, one mission for the city of Brockton. Uh, I know we come from different wards, and we come from different streets, and different uh, parts of the community, and we come from different um, cultures and different experiences, but at the end of the day, we stand as one. We stand as a democratic group, a democratic committee in the city of Brockton and looking forward to better in this uh, city. And again, I'm so honored to be a part of this strong and vibrant community today. I'll share with you a little bit about myself. Uh, um, I'm a Jamaican guy who had enough sense, like um, Councillor uh, Sullivan, to marry a Brockton gal. <laughs> Over 11 years ago, we have uh, two sons, six and nine years old, Joshua and Marlon Green, and they're our heartbeat. I grew up in Jamaica, um, and I grew up on a, um, and there's a Jamaican in the back, 
Um, and, and I grew up on a sugar plantation where my dad worked and my mom stayed at home. And at a young age, I had my first job, and I'll never forget what that job was. I worked in the summer months um, drying pimentos. I got up early every morning before sunrise with my brothers, and we went down the street and we'd pull out the uh, pimentos, lay them out in, in the uh, sunshine, and we would wait throughout the day and we would watch and see what the clouds would do or what the forecast would be, and we would hurry up um, and put them back in the bags and stow them away before the sun went down or before rain came. We learned responsibility then. We had opportunity then. Then better came. My father worked so hard and created the opportunity for us to come to the U.S. for better. And we found better in the city of Brockton. And it is my desire and my heartbeat to ensure that better remains in the city of Brockton. And when we are gone, we leave this city better than the way we found it for the next generation. And so we must work, and that is my intent, to work to ensure that this is a better city for the next generation, for our sons and our daughters. We leave this place a better place for them. Leave more opportunities for our sons and our daughters. The same way I had these summer uh, summer opportunities kept me out of trouble and taught me responsibilities. We need to ensure that we create those same opportunities for our young people in the city of Brockton. I thank you and I look forward to a uh, dialogue and sharing more with you about myself and my plans for um, City Council in Ward 3. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I know our Ward 4 City Councilor was here. Is Paul Stadensky still in the room? I don't think so, but one thing I want to tell you about Stadensky, don't think we forgot completely about the Stadensky Scholarship. We're, we're rebuilding our City Committee Treasury, and we lost our biggest fundraiser, which are, was our day at the races over at Raynham Taunton Park, so we're working on plans to recoup and do a scholarship at some point later in this year. And Paul's aware of that, and he is still a big supporter of the committee. Um, we have two candidates running for City Council in Ward 5 in November. I'm going to have first up Ollie Spears. Thank you, Mark. How's everybody doing today? Good, good. I just want to thank the Sullivan family for, for this event. And also, I want to thank everybody for coming and staying, as staying here as long as you can before the Patriots game. Get home. I'll get them home. <laughs> so my name is Ollie Spears. Those, those that don't know me, I'm running for Ward 5 City Council on the city's east side, where I was born and raised. Born at the Brock Hospital. Yes. We got some east siders in the house? All right, all right, all right. So I started, I started, I started my, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Hold on. <laughs> I started, yes, yes. I started my journey on, my tr on track. Um, I don't want to say politically, but serving my community when I was 16 years old uh, with, I, with a group called Our Positive Posse. And I can say I'm the only candidate in Ward 5 that went to the White House and met President Clinton. <laughs> That's a, if somebody, can somebody fact check that for me? No, I'm just <laughs> But definitely, Brockton's in, Brockton's in my DNA. I love Brockton. I do anything I can to help people um, at the soup kitchen at Mainspring, um, feeding over, I believe, 500 elderly last Thanksgiving at three different high rises. Over that, right? So I love Brockton. Brockton loves me. People love my, people like my opponent, Ian Bogart, but Brockton loves me. So vote for me on November 3rd. All is here, one five. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ollie. Um, Ian Borgard is also a uh, candidate for City Council in Ward 5, uh, someone who's been very active in the community. Ian, come on up. Well, last 
after an introduction like that. Seriously. Um, let's put it this way. There's uh, three S words uh, about me here. One, uh, there's no escaping short. Okay? Because I don't want there to be any confusion between my opponent and myself. <laughs> and, and our appearance. Okay. Slap them. That's what I sincerely hope no one ever thinks I am. I've been involved with this city way, way back when I graduated from Broughton High, um, even way, way back when I went to Sacred Heart School and um, got everyone to sign a petition to stop discriminating against short people. Um, yeah, there were um, three or four of us and they had issues with that. But anyway, um, then, um, no, seriously, and uh, from Broughton High where, you know, as we stand, you know, stand in this BFW post, and by the way, that's why we have the, um, the term Fighting Five. Evidently, so many individuals from Ward Five were lost during World War II that served, you know, our nation. And um, that was uh, recognized, and that, that's how they were known as the Fighting Five. And uh, very important for us to realize that, because uh, we have the right to vote thanks to the sacrifice of these individuals, and let's not forget the ones currently serving. Also, um, <laughs> yeah, and, uh, we were on this action bracelet and a POW bracelets in those days, and it was um, part of Vietnam. And uh, so we continue, unfortunately, it's still war. But there's also remarkable human beings that do so much for the veterans and um, for the um, individuals that are currently serving. Let's not forget those, those people ever. And uh, meanwhile, the last one is debatable. Sweet. Uh, let's face it. Um, I am not always known for my sweetness. And let's quote someone we all know and love and we sincerely hope gets elected on October 6th and again in November, and that's Michael Brady. Uh, he once told me, and people are afraid of you. <laughs> so really, they weigh uh, 115 pounds and I'm five feet tall, but there we go, people. Um, he said, Ann, you tell it like it is, and you know what you're talking about. And that scares people. And I got to thinking, who am I scaring? Well, if I am scaring those people, there are four, how would I say it, not supporting the good programs we have in this community, well, let me continue scaling them. If I am for the individuals that don't want to see the best for our students and our teachers, let's not forget that union people, and the best for the people that are elderly in this community and the remarkable medical professional individuals that help them on a daily basis, and one of the um, unions that we never ever talk about, um, and that's the social workers. And those individuals that work with them closely, because we have an awful lot of challenges. We're not the only ones, but we're bigger than everybody else in Plymouth County, so they just point the finger at us. But let's talk about all the great things that we are doing in this city. I mean, the other night, we had Broughton Age Faith Community addressing some issues, and we've had some individuals going around with various petitions to get uh, questions on the um, ballot in 2018. I can't believe we're thinking that far ahead, but we have to. Okay, the other thing is we have um, people that have ideas and good ones. Some of them are currently serving on city council, and I won't embarrass them, you know. It's tough enough they have to put up with me. And um, they, you know, were, the other night, after a bit, I wrote a proposal to get community, gardenings into, uh, community gardens into the city and work closely with that. It's not money. It's programs to help, you know, turn things around and some... Um, how would I say it, some unsightly areas and, and put them into some sort of productivity. And then we're talking about what we can't stop thinking about, and that's the issues of the day, whether it's safety and our obligation to keep others safe. And that doesn't mean you have to put on a uniform and get a badge. That means that you have to consider things from courtesy driving to courtesy walking. Let's remember these kids are going on the street with the largest fourth largest school system in the Commonwealth. Let's go slow. Let's pay attention to these kids crossing the street and agree of parents and parents and whatever with them. But let's remember that you're voting on September 22nd for some remarkable people because you have the power to do that. And then you're coming back on October 6th and doing it again because it's important. And look at this, they're really afraid that I'm going to keep on talking. And then you're coming back in November, all right? But most of all, you're doing this for yourselves, too, because a better Broughton is better for everyone and, uh, you know, not just for those that are elected, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Anne. We already heard from the candidates of uh, Democrats from Ward 6. Um, Shirley Asak is a candidate for re-election. She is not opposed. Do you want to say a few words, Shirley? 
and thank you for the beautiful flower worship. Good afternoon, everybody, and I won't take up much of your time. It's almost 12 o'clock. Um, first of all, happy birthday, Mr. Sullivan. And um, I'm just, I, I've been told over and over again that I have the best opponent. I'm on a post. So, um, <laughs> so it gives me great pleasure. I don't take advantage of it. I look forward to working another, hard another two years for my Ward 7 people. And um, I'd like to wish all my colleagues and friends um, and all the new candidates that are running for election this Tuesday. So please go out and vote this Tuesday. And of course, on October 6th, go out and vote for our friend Mike Brady. Thank you. Thank you very much, Charlotte. Well, I said we'd be done by noon. We're going to be done by But most importantly, give yourselves all a round of applause for being involved in our community, for participating, and for being here today. Thank you, and you'll be hearing more from us at the Democratic City Committee. Have a wonderful day.